Well, I've been coming here so often, I think most of you know me, but for those of you who don't, I'm the Reverend Andy Lees. I'm supposed to be retired, but in 2019, the bishop asked me if I'd go for four months to Christ Church Fort McLeod to help them out. And I am still going down to Fort McLeod to help them out. 300 kilometer round trip every time. I do supply like this and I volunteer at the Foothills Hospice in Okotoks. So if you want advice on a quiet retirement, I'm not your man. <laughs> well, today we get to hear some of the most appealing words that Jesus of Nazareth ever uttered. It is no wonder that the common people heard him so gladly. They're the sort of words one would expect the divine to speak. Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Beautiful words indeed. When we hear them, we could almost be in the middle of a meditation. So let's look at this invitation. It begins as Jesus likens the human race to a team of oxen who are laboring under a yoke that chafes and cuts their back with its heavy burden. It's not a very complimentary picture, but I think we would agree it's an accurate one, especially in these troubled times. Jesus implies that all of us are in some way burdened. What about those of us who are parents, for example? Sure, there is joy in being a parent, but one never stops worrying about one's child, no matter how old they are. My 37-year-old daughter has just broken her back, falling off her horse. I personally believe the saying is true, that as a parent, you are only as happy as your least happy child. Just think about that. You are only as happy as your least happy child. There's burden enough for a start, and that's before you start working out your taxes. It is such burden, people, that Jesus invites to come to him. He promises to ease the yoke of worry or loneliness, of illness or despair, of disappointment or grief, any burden. And he promises to ease our yoke, not always totally remove it, but ease our yoke, to lift our burden, to give us rest and to set, him free, set us free. Listen to these words we know so well. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And we know that's true because we know he came to us, took our humanity to himself when he was born, and took our sin and guilt to himself when he died. The idea is probably nowhere better expressed than in John Bunyan's famous allegory, The Pilgrim's Progress. Up this way then did burden Christian run, and not without some difficulty, because of the load on his back. He ran thus until he came to a place somewhat ascending, and upon that place stood a cross and below a sepulchre. A sepulchre is a sp specific type of tomb that is carved into the rock. Upon that place stood a cross and below a sepulchre. So I saw in my dream this Christian come up to the cross. His burden loosed off his shoulders and fell from his back and began to tumble. It continued to do so until it reached the sepulcher where it fell in and I saw it no more. Then was Christian glad and lightsome and said with a merry heart, he has given me rest by his sorrow and given me life by his death. Such wonderful words to eloquently describe what Jesus has done for all of us. Now, it's possible to believe that our burden is little compared to others, so we think it isn't relevant to us. That sort of attitude, laced in dainty humility, compromises Christ's sacrifice. He comes to free each one of us from all burdens, no matter how light we think they are compared to others. And our task is not to compare and contrast our burden and our experiences with others. Our task is to embrace this new freedom. Then, 
The first thing we do with this newfound freedom is to go and tell someone. Exercise this new freedom by using it to spread the good news that Jesus can set anyone free. This freedom is our witness to the world and announcing it cements that freedom in our own hearts. It's called joy. Joy that nothing can remove because we can cope with the new yoke by always resting in Jesus. Indeed, notice how balanced this offer is. The Christian life is not just taking it easy and enjoying our newfound rest. No, when we come to Christ to ease our burden, a marvelous exchange takes place. He lifts our burden, which is heavy, and places upon us instead what he calls an easy burden. And it is hard to imagine a better place to be, to be than living and operating with God's gifting in a place one senses God wants us to be, the place of the easy yoke, fueled by God's strength rather than just our own. And it's not just theory. I've experienced this surrender of the yoke myself. In 1999, I was coming to the end of my curacy at St. James Calgary in the Northwest. I was promised an appointment as rector by the then bishop, but would have to wait a year before the position was free. That would be September 2000. So I took a year off to do a clinical pastoral education course at the Calgary Foothills Hospital. I enjoyed the work, but come August, I had not heard from the diocese. So I telephoned and asked about my new position. I was told by the secretary, not the bishop, not by the diocesan executive, I was told by the secretary that the position was no longer free. I was suddenly faced with the prospect of unemployment. And for the first time in my life, I had nowhere to go. I had a problem I could not solve myself. I realized up to that point when I prayed, I always had a solution in the back of my mind and God and I were gonna work, work on my solution. Not here, I got on my knees and surrendered to God. My prayer was one word, help. I surrendered my burden to God. The very next day, my boss at the hospital called me in. And long story short, he told me he had a full-time chaplain's position in the Foothills Spiritual Care Department, and miraculously, no one had applied for it. Would I like the job? Having just asked God's help, I of course accepted immediately. God replaced my burden with an easy yoke. I love the work as I was involved with the Foothills Hospital for 20 years, and I loved every minute of it. Now, I hope we've all heard of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was a Protestant pastor who was imprisoned by the Nazis in the war. He was executed on the direct orders of Himmler a few days before the Flossenburg concentration camp where Bonhoeffer was imprisoned was when, when it was liberated. In his famous book, The Cost of Discipleship, he wrote this. Only the person who follows the command of Jesus without reserve and submits unresistingly to his yoke finds the burden easy. The command of Jesus is hard, unutterably hard for those who try to resist it or compromise it. But for those who willingly submit, the yoke is easy and the burden is light. Well, I can attest to that from my experience. But wait a minute, how do we do this? Well, it doesn't have to be spectacular. It's not as difficult as we think. For example, at present, because of the aftermath of COVID, many people report they are experiencing heavy burden of loneliness. People don't visit like they used to. People don't phone anymore. It's difficult to get through each long day. In our own strength, it is hard to bear. Well, at the moment, there are others who feel just as you do. So why not give this burden to Jesus and ask him to replace it? Ask him to lay on your heart through the Holy Spirit someone who you should phone. And the next person who comes into your mind, it may be immediately or later in the day, phone them 
and be honest about why you're phoning. Don't invent a pretext to phone. Just tell them they came into your mind, so hence the phone call. And the joy that often comes, the joy that often comes from this will ease the loneliness. It might cement a friendship or even start a good one. Goodbye loneliness. In all this difficult time, I've had only one person phone me this way. It was a fellow priest. And now when we meet at Deanery, there's a new bond of friendship between us. This is not a spectacular story, but most times the divine works in our heart. It is unspectacular, but still suffused with joy. Indeed, intervention can be so unspectacular that we miss it if we don't expect it. So there we have it. Multitudes of people today are seeking rest and longing for peace, freedom and love, and it can be found. The answer is clear in one of the greatest invitations ever made. First, by coming to Jesus in order to loose our burden of sin and guilt, and then by taking upon ourselves the lighter burden of daily discipleship. True rest is found first in losing our burden and taking upon us his yoke. Isn't that what we want? Well, as the old Guinness advert says, why don't you try it again for the first time? Amen.